spring in right now also. Uh, Democratic presidential candidate, former Governor Martin O'Malley of Maryland, and also still with us, we have Bloomberg Politics' Mark Halperin, the National Journal's Ron Fournier, and Yahoo News' Bianca Goldriga, and the Huffington Post's Sam Stein. So, uh, Governor, we've got a lot of people who have a lot of questions to ask you. I guess we need to do a lightning round. Yesterday, Hillary Clinton talked about her approach to taking on ISIS. I'm curious what your thought is. But, what, what your thought is about Hillary talking about uh, air power followed by ground forces? I think, as usual, Secretary Clinton leapfrogged over the really the most important uh, aspect, and that is human intelligence or the lack thereof on the ground. I mean, look, a lot of these failings, we have gone from, from one crisis to another without any notion of what is what are the secondary effects, what's going to happen after a regime ends or a regime falls. And that's really the critical the, the missing point here. And Secretary Clinton's had a lot of experience as Secretary of State, but she hasn't shown an ability to really anticipate what comes next. And, and honestly, as a nation, we need to become a lot better at that. We need a much more far-seeing foreign policy. We need to be much more collaboratively engaged, especially in troubled hotspots, where the threat of, of failing nation states then creates a vacuum that gives rise to, to groups like like ISIL. So look, this is a whole new age of warfare. And it is there are very few rules from the Cold War era that still apply. And that's why we need new thinking and we need fresh approaches and we need to we need to right. understand this, not in terms of two giant divisions squaring off in a desert someplace and in old warfare terms, right. but this is a new age. Would Martin O'Malley as All right, president Mark Alpern. Uh, change your attitude in the time of war towards the balance between national security and civil liberties? Or would that be constant regardless of the threat the United States faces? Well, there's a constant need to maintain that balance, Mark. I mean, we, you can't give up your, as Benjamin Franklin said, you can't trade your, your privacy or your freedom for your security. Otherwise, what the hell are we defending as a country? And that's one of the real dangers here when we're struck like this. We saw the debate with the, with the House that can never get anything done in a timely fashion, rushed to uh, capitalize on the fears, the understandable fears including that people 50, have. Including about 50 Democrats. Uh, yes, uh, uh, shamefully, including 50 Democrats. Uh, what we need in times of crisis is not to fan the fears. I've never found that fear is a very helpful value uh, for, uh, for leaders in a crisis. There are things Congress can do. There are things governors should be doing. Governors should be asking whether or not they actually have a functional fusion center for intelligence in their own state. They should be asking whether they have interoperable communications, whether they're actually uh, uh, acting in coordinated ways with federal authorities and all of these capacities that governors should be focused on. Congress should focus on making it harder for uh, people on the watch list to buy combat assault weapons in the United States of America. All right. But we've got to put Governor? the brakes on the on the fear and the politics let, let, of pander. Let, you, and, you and I have talked about how all optics right, let, and tone let, is let, part, Let's go is to part, Ron Fournier. Ron. Optics and tone is obviously a part of leadership. Flipping the coin a little bit on Mark's question. What, how would you have uh, shaped public opinion, led the country differently than President Obama has this last three or four days? Look, the, this crisis is still relatively new in terms of the, of, the, of the uptick in the Paris attacks, but I have found that in times of crisis, it's very important for leaders and to remind us of the principles that we share as a people, the values we have as a people. Uh, when you hear people like Donald Trump talking about wanting to do ID cards based on religion, what the hell is that? I mean, well, how is that at all American? But President I mean, so Obama, him, him coming so hard after Republicans, uh, was that the right way to lead from overseas? Oh, I, uh, look, I, I think you have to push back. In times of phobia, when people are trying to, uh, or, or when people are, uh, are trying to fan the fears and, and play the politics of fear, I think the president does have to push back, yes. Did he do a and good I job, though, of accepting well. people's fears and acknowledging their fears, or did he just dismiss their fears and move on? Look, I, I Oh, who the hell knows? I'll let you guys uh, judge that. I can tell you that President Obama's leadership is far preferable to that uh, rushed and rather cowardly vote that they had in the House yesterday. Look, we are a nation who has always had the compassion to alleviate humanitarian suffering. And uh, the second we take down the Statue of Liberty and replace it with barbed wire fences, it's the second we lose our well, country. Ma Ma Martin O'Malley, uh, Governor, with, with all due respect, that's not the question that's being asked. We're talking, we're, we're curious to see what 
what type of leader you would be right. in this type of crisis. How would your response to this been different to that of Barack Obama, who even the Washington Post uh, called petulant and peevish in the G20 summit? What would you have done differently, and how would you have done a better job to alleviate the fears of Americans than Barack Obama did? I would talk through the fact that there's a 13-step process that goes through this vetting process uh, for Syrian refugees. We are in no danger of having a whole bunch of Syrian refugees come to our country anytime soon. It is a one-year, uh, some people say two-year process before they actually go through the vetting process. I also would have called on Congress to do more to improve the conditions in these refugee camps there in, uh, in the Middle East, in Jordan, and, uh, and also in Turkey. Uh, let's alleviate the human suffering here. Let's step up uh, and actually be proactive and have an offense when it comes to this humanitarian crisis instead of acting like we're a bunch of a uh, bunch of uh, uh, cowering uh, rabbits here. Uh, so uh, that's what I would do. Look, you've got to demystify this process, and you also have to challenge people to do more, not to do less. Uh, the second we, you know, pull the covers over our heads or, or start issuing ID cards for our Muslim neighbors is the second we lose our nation. And uh, and that's what we need to, to be about, and that's what we need to defend. And, and Governor, we've had folks in intelligence, including from within the administration, who've been blaming Edward Snowden for the lack in intelligence and surveillance uh, specifically regarding the attacks in France. Would you blame him as well? Would you place the blame on him in dropping the ball on surveillance? No, I, th I think it's too early to tell exactly what what ball was dropped, if any balls were dropped, and um, and and the answers to uh, how we get around this encryption challenge. Technology is always changing, but that's why in this new era we need more collaborations between public sector and private sector. We need to bring in the the uh, the, uh, uh, the cell Silicon Valley and the smart people we have in our country to say, look, how do we figure this out? How do we work this problem? It's about network security. But do you blame Snowden or not? No, I don't blame Snowden. So when James Woolsey says that he needs to be a public, he needs to be executed for treason and, and hung at that, you disagree with that? Well, I think I don't put Snowden in a hero category. I think he should return to the United States and face prosecution. I don't consider him a hero. But on this particular issue, uh, I think it's too early on the after action to actually tell exactly what might have been caught and what was missed. I mean, this was a pretty notorious figure uh, that they were looking for in France. Uh, uh, ISIS outside of Syria and Iraq is more akin to a to a drug gang or a, a mafia group, and and those are the skills that are required. And and it's all about information right. sharing. It's about relentless follow up. It's about the things that that are actually right. uh, uh, more about protecting the homeland than they are about fence, facing off with armies in the in a desert. All right, Martin O'Malley, right. thank you so much. We hey, greatly appreciate your time and appreciate you being here to talk about these obviously extraordinarily important issues that we're facing. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.